Hello, GRA and AFCH are proud to present our new device, DDS9912 Shield, for Arduino Mega. It's a direct digital synthesis generator, DDS, based on AD9912 from analog devices. This DDS is one of the lowest noise levels available on the market. This device is designed in the form of a shield for the Arduino Mega. You can either purchase the shield separately and use it with your Arduino Mega, or order the product with the firmware pre-installed and use the device right out of the box. The firmware is completely open source and available for free on GitHub. It has three outputs types, sinus, CMOS, differential HSTL, and one input for external clocking. The DDS can be powered by USB, but we recommend using an external 7.5 volts, 1 amperes power supply. The supply voltage should not exceed 7.5 volts, as the board contains eight low noise linear regulators, and exceeding the recommended power voltage may cause them to fail. The number of regulators is necessary to ensure complete isolation of the power lines of the DDS. DDS can be clocked from onboard crystal oscillator, onboard TCXO, or from external source, connected via SMA connector. The device parameters can be easily configured using an OLED display, a single button, two jumpers, and an encoder. In addition, there are connectors for connecting an external button and an external encoder. In our shield frequency is specified in Hertz units and the power is set in dBm. Unlike Chinese counterparts, for which the power is set in raw 14-bit values, sinus output channel, marked as RF out 1, contains an RF transformer and 9th order low-pass filter and can provide frequency from 100 kHz to 500 MHz. For proper operation of the RF out 1 output, the CMOS slash HSTL enabled jumper must be open. If it is not removed, the level at the RF out 1 output will be reduced by 3 dBm. To activate the CMOS and HSTL channels, the CMOS slash HSTL enabled jumper must be closed. The CMOS channel is connected to the CMOS underscore out output and is capable of outputting a frequency of up to 200 MHz, and the output voltage on this output is 3.3V or 1.8V, which is selected by the ref level jumper. The differential HSTL channel is capable of operating up to 1 GHz and is connected to the OUT and OUT-B outputs. For the correct functioning of the device you need to select the right clocking source and at frequency in the setup menu. To do this, go to the setup menu, press and hold encoder for 1 second. The clock SRC menu item provides three options, XOAT, if a crystal is used, TCXO, an external clocking source. If you want to use an external clocking source, it is necessary to unsolder capacitor C20. Since the device is shipped with a pre-installed TCXO by default, select it in the settings. In this particular device, a TCXO is installed that operates at a frequency of 40 MHz. Therefore, in the next menu item, set the frequency to 40 MHz. In the next menu item of this menu, you can enable the SRC doubler function, which reduces the level of phase noise but increases the level of subharmonics. By default, core is working on 960 MHz. But, to achieve a cleaner spectrum on output, we can do overclocking up to 1360 MHz. The program automatically calculates the correct multiplier based on the core frequency set by the user. After the instrument has been configured, let's see how it works. Don't forget to open the CMOS slash HSTL enabled jumper, otherwise the level will be lowered by 3 dBm. First, connect the sine channel to the oscilloscope. Only change the frequency for now. Now let's see how it looks on the spectrum analyzer. First change the frequency, and then the amplitude. Let's take a look at the phase noise.
It's worth noting that our device cannot measure phase noise below minus 120 dBc slash hertz with an offset of 10 kHz. Now, let's connect the CMOS channel to the oscilloscope. Remember to enable this output not only with the CMOS slash HSTL enabled jumper, but also in the settings. Using the ref level jumper, switch the voltage to 3.3V. The output frequency at the CMOS output channel can be divided by the value set by the DID parameter. Let's take a look at the signal at the output of the HSTL channel. Also don't forget to enable this channel in the settings. The frequency on this output can be doubled with a single click. And finally, let's take a look at how the sweep function works. Set the start and end frequencies, the time for one sweep, and start the function. Thanks for watching.